So I'll be kind of working in between uh, these different flavors of brain for you. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, for our identification list, we're going to start off with uh, gyri and sulci. So gyri are going to be the the folds, the raised folds that give the brain its wrinkled appearance. All right. And then sulci are going to be the indentations and the grooves in between the gyri. All right. and we also have some, some fissures, some fissures in the brain. So fissures are going to be deeper than the sulci. All right. The first one is going to be the longitudinal fissure. Okay. Longitudinal, so this is the front part of our brain. Here's our back, so anterior and posterior. Longitudinal fissure is what we're going to be cutting along today. All right. So longitudinal fissure running from anterior to posterior. And then we also have the transverse cerebral fissure. So transverse cerebral fissure, I think this brain will put on the side. Transverse cerebral fissure is going to be separating the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So going all all the way around, alright, all the way around this back side, alright, all through here. Okay, okay. Um, so a few, there's a, a few sulci that I want you to identify as well, alright. So in order to do this, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the different regions of the brain. So if you've taken psychology, you've probably, I'll put that side down, we only need half today uh, for this part. Um, so if you've taken psychology, you've probably gone over these regions before. Um, so we have the, the frontal lobe of the brain. Uh, this is where a lot of decision making and processing um, occur. So uh, a lot of people say, you know, your frontal cortex, frontal, uh, frontal lobe does not fully develop until you're in your mid-20s. Gentlemen, might take a little bit longer decision making processes. All right, we have the parietal lobe um, a lot, so it's this green one that's right here. Um, it's color coded for you guys, not actually green in the brain, but just color coded for you guys here. So, parietal lobe is going to be a lot of somatosensory um, uh, relay going on here. Temporal, so temporal lobe, think about that, that word and think about um, maybe when we went over bones of the skull. All right, what bone was there, and what sensory structure was associated with that lobe? All right. So it's going to be the ear, right? So a lot of a lot of auditory speech processing going on in temporal lobe. And then on the back, I'll put these two together. All right. Back is going to be occipital lobe, occipital like ocular. All right. So what do you think is going to be? Uh, what information is going to be processed in that region of the brain? Probably going to be uh, vision and sight. Okay, all right. So we got parietal, or so frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital in the back. All right. So um, I do want you to identify. Um, so the central sulcus. Central sulcus is going to be in between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. So this guy right here is central sulcus. Central sulcus. Okay. Now. With the central sulcus, there's two, uh, two gyri that I also want you to be familiar with. Okay. The pre-central gyri, gyrus, and the uh, post-central gyrus. Okay. So the pre-central gyrus is going to be associated with the frontal lobe. Pre-central gyrus is going to be a lot of motor information, motor relay. Okay, post-central gyrus is associated with the parietal lobe is going to be somatosensory. Okay, so somatosensory information going on here. All right. Okay, and this is on, on both sides of the central sulcus. I also want you to be familiar with the lateral sulcus. Okay, so lateral sulcus is going to be um, kind of dividing the temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobe. Okay. All right. So we've done a lot of the external structures of the cerebrum. Um, so we are we're dividing our uh, dissection today into into different regions. Um, so the cerebrum, which is part of the telencephalon, right? What we all know and love as our our brain. Okay. Easily identifiable. Um, we're doing the diencephalon, which consists of structures that are on either side of the third ventricle. 
um, the brain stem, which is the mes mesencephalon, metencephalon, and myencephalon, and then the uh, cerebellum itself. So that's kind of how we're breaking it up. So we just took care of the cerebrum. All right, so we went through external structures of the cerebrum. All right, we're going to split this. All right, we're going to split this along the longitudinal fissure. Okay, the longitudinal fissure. Okay. And we're going to go over some internal structures. So, boop, cut it open. Wow, look how beautiful that is. Okay. So, the first thing I want you to look at is the corpus callosum. Okay. This is really cool. This is how the right and left hemispheres of the cerebrum communicate with each other. All right. And we'll cut this open in the, the sheep brain as well, and we actually dissect that. All right. Um, but there's going to be some, so white is going to be myelinated axons, and you'll see gray uh, in there too for um, uh, the neuronal cell bodies. Okay, but this is a corpus callosum where the right and left uh, hemispheres of the cerebrum communicate. Okay. The next structure, so there's this other little, um, little white part on here, it's colored white on this plastic model. This is the fornix. Okay. This is associated with smell, and you'll see it's a lot bigger in the sheep brain in proportion to everything else. Okay, So it's bigger in the sheep brain. The other thing um, that we're looking at under internal structures is the septum pellucidum. So this is where the third ventricle is going to be. Septum. Think of like septum piercing, like the septum in between your nose, the thing that gives you you know, two holes to pick instead of one. Right? So septum, like the divider. Okay, so there's going to be... Um, a very thin little dividing membrane in between um, this section right here. So we'll call that septum pellucidum. I actually have it on um, our sheep brain model right here. So you can see the corpus callosum. Pull that down. There you guys go. Corpus callosum. This is in uh, acrylic, so I'm not actually touching the brain. It might be a little bit hard to get the pointer right on it. All right, so corpus callosum. Here's the fornix. And there's um, this little membrane that's right here. That's the septum pellucidum. Okay. All right. Um, separating anterior part of the, the lateral ventricle. That's what the septum pellucidum does. Okay. So that is external and internal structures for the cerebrum. So we're, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Okay. Um, so external structures. External structures. We're going to... Uh, look at the olfactory bulbs. So on plastic model of human brain, olfactory bulbs are uh, are going to be here. So this is actually going to be associated with cranial nerve number one. Um, so this is the only um, only sensor that doesn't go through the thalamus. Okay, it does not relay through the thalamus. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is um, is optic. Nerves. I actually want to start showing this to you on the sheep brain itself. All right. So here, are olfactory bulbs on the olfactory bulbs. There we go. Olfactory bulbs on the sheep brain. Pretty big too. Pretty big. Thinking about that fornix that we just looked at. Also pretty big. So sense of smell is going to be pretty important for uh, for sheep. Okay. So olfactory bulbs right here can lift them up, coming off the um, anterior portion of the frontal lobe. Just looking underneath. All right, so we can see the olfactory bulbs. Um, this right here, this little nubbins, all right, this is actually going to be uh, part of the, the optic uh, nerve. So this is where they would actually cross. So you have the optic nerves crossing right here. And this little X, so the, the extension of this has is, is been cut off. But this is the actual little X. We call this the optic chiasma. Chiasma just means X, so this is where the optic nerves, cranial nerve number two, they cross. Okay. All right. The other thing is going to be the uh, the pituitary gland or hypothesis, and this guy has been cut off. This is right where pituitary gland would sit. Okay. Also called the hypothesis. So the pituitary gland is also called the hypothesis. All right. Uh, 
Um, so that's external structures of diencephalon. For internal structures, we're going to look at the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the epithalamus. Okay, so the thalamus, let's see, I'll show two on this one. So thalamus is going to be this whole structure right here, and on the thalamus there's this little tiny dot. Okay, this is actually going to connect um, the thalamus on both hemispheres. So the inter this is called the intermediate mass or the interthalamic adhesion. Um, so what the thal so thalamus is like sensory switchboard. This is going to be uh, relay for impulses traveling to and from the brainstem, the spinal cord, the cerebrum. And the in the cerebellum, so lots of sens sensory switchboard things directing things on where to go next. Okay. Okay. Um, the hypothalamus. So hypo means below, right? So hypothalamus is going to be below the thalamus. Okay. What we're looking for here is the infundibulum and the pituitary glands. Infundibulum is a little stalk that the that the pituitary gland is on and then the pituitary gland or the um, hypophysis is located at the end of that stalk. Okay? Um, epithalamus, epi means above, so epithalamus, um, what we're looking for here is another gland is going to be the pineal gland or the pineal body. Right? Pineal gland or pineal body, and this is what, you know, people can say like, oh, it's open your third eye, decalcify your pineal gland. That's what they're talking about, is this guy right here. Okay, um, This is very, very important in your circadian rhythm, your sleep-wake cycle. So it produces melatonin um, to regulate your, your circadian rhythm. Okay, so that's in external and internal structures of the diencephalon. So this is the cerebellum, right? This is anterior surface, posterior surface of the brain. Just reflecting the cerebellum a little bit, you're going to see one, two, three, four little mounds, okay? The two superior and the two inferior, okay? So all four of these make the corpora quad, like four quadrigemina, okay? So the two up top are going to be the superior colliculi, and the two on the bottom are going to be the inferior colliculi. Super fun to say. So superior colliculi are actually going to receive uh, signals from the retina. This is involved in a lot of um, a lot of vision pathway. The two inferior, so inferior colliculi, these are going to be involved in a lot of auditory pathways. Okay, and I'll show you on. Um, the cross section of the human model too. So this is where we, so if we reflect so on the sheep brain we we took the cerebellum and we kind of reflected it back. Um, and we saw this guy right here. Right? So this little bump and this little bump. So this is half, so this would be one half of the, the corporal quadrigemina. So the superior colliculi again receive information from the retina. Right, from the retina for vision. And then inferior colliculi receiving information uh, for auditory pathways. Okay. All right, so that's the midbrain. Okay, then we get to move on to the pons. All right, so pons is going to be, and I'll show you just on this, this, um, just a, the mid of uh, the um, brainstem taken out. So this is going to be the pons, right? <clears throat> Plastic model. This really big bulge right here is going to be the pods, and there is going to be a lot of bridges of pathways going on in the pods. That's actually how pods gets its name um, from all the bridging of pathways that happen here. All right, and the last part is going to be the, <clears throat> the medulla oblongata. Um, this is where a lot of breathing, um, homeostatic, homeostatic um, relay information goes on. In then on, um, just this is just the uh, brain stem dissected, uh, midbrain would extend up a little bit. This is the pons, and then the medulla, and then the brain stem, which would exit out of which structure that we learned in the skull? The foramen magnum, right? That big hole in the occipital bone, right? That's where the brain stem would exit and become the, the spinal cord. 
All right. So on to our last division of the brain that we're looking at, um, the cerebellum. So on sheep brain, on whole sheep brain, this is what I reflected to show you guys the corpora quadrigemina, right? The superior and inferior colliculi. So this is a cere this this part right here is going to be cerebellum. Okay, on the brain stem that's uh, isolated, we have the cerebellum uh, attached to it. Okay, on plastic model. Remember we talked about that, the transverse cerebral fissure that's separating the cerebrum from the, uh, the cerebellum. Okay, so cerebellum is going to be a lot of balance, right? a lot of balance um, relay information going on in here. All right, so if we open this up, there's going to be a lot of this, this branching, this branching white matter. So that branching white matter, and you can see it, we'll see it really pretty when we cut open the sheep brain. Um, branching white matter is going to be uh, the arbor vitae, the tree of life. Okay, the arbor vitae, so all the branching uh, white matter. Okay. Right. And uh, I have in my acrylic, my wonderful, pretty little acrylic brain, um, the cerebellum. You can kind of see the arbor vitae in there a little bit. Okay. 